random thing I have to tell y'all. Anyone else have like a weird position that they sit in when they're like zoned in or working or relaxed? You wanna know what mine is? In this exact chair, all the way back, like this. Feet up, cross. Hiding my feet, you are not gonna see those for free, that's for damn sure. Cross, spread like this, phone. I don't know why I do this. I don't know why this is my comfort position. <laughs> it, it works. If I'm editing, this is how I'm sitting. I look like a f***ing caveman. Hi everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Isabella and welcome back to the channel. So I know we've kind of switched out the setup up a little bit. I tossed this together and thought, you know what? I gotta film a video today. Let's get comfy and cute, you know? So today's video is actually so perfectly tied because I've been dying to talk about unethical influencers more, but wanting to dive into the fake lifestyles of some of them. Now, this has been a prominent topic that I talked about with multi-level marketing leaders in those like sketchy companies like Avon, Arbonne, Monet, you name it, where people will put this whole facade on to give you the vibe that they're really rich, you know, when they're not. Same thing when it comes to a lot of influencers. That's This is like something that's kind of across the board with someone that wants to sell you something or grow. There are some people who will flat out fake a rich lifestyle to y'all. And it's so horrendous. I know I wanna do deep dive about this someday, but we have a perfect example of this happening right now on the internet. We're gonna be talking about a content creator by the name of Marlena, who has been arrested for lying to y'all, essentially. So I can't wait. We are gonna dive into this. This is gonna be so fascinating. Buckle up, grab a snack, grab a drink, hang out with me, and let's get into it. Real quickly though, I do wanna take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, which look at what just popped up on my table right over here. A couple things that I absolutely love. One, breaking stigmas to talking about the holidays and conveniently womanizer is partnering with me today for your holiday needs whether they're for a gift for someone else or yourself all womanizer products feature the patented pleasure air technology which stimulates without direct contact it uses air waves to gently massage and suction resulting in a very unique amazing feeling we need to talk about the vibe so the vibe is a silent lay on vibrator offering a new kind of stimulation with new ultra wave vibrations so this vibrator technology developed by Womanizer offers a smooth, rich sensation to add to your experience. We have 10 different intensity levels, the ultra wave vibrating technology that we just talked about. It also has three autopilot modes that vary in intensity levels harmoniously. Next up, no pun intended, we need to talk about Womanizer next. It has the patented pleasure air technology, but also improved one, the player Azure 3D. It has a climax control, which is a brand new feature. The user can now control the depth of each pulse for a much richer, more intense experience. It has 14 intensity levels, incredibly whisper quiet. It also has a smart silence feature, so it only turns on when it comes in contact with skin, which is so smart. And again, Next also offers autopilot features as well, just like Vibe. With your purchase of these products, delivery is free and discreet, and each product has a five-year warranty. That is amazing. So if you guys want to purchase the Vibe Next, both, whether it's a gift for yourself, your partner, anyone else that you're thinking of, this is a wonderful gift that I would recommend. Womanizer always has amazing offers on their website, but for this one, my viewers, you guys can go to the link in the description below and pin comment to shop today for a great deal. Thank you so much to Womanizer for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get into it. Let's talk about who Marlena is. So Marlena actually is this content creator who is known for, when you picture a beige content creator that posts up Target hauls, Amazon hauls, that's exactly what you're gonna see when it comes to Marlena's content. And that's not a dig, it's just that's a very prominent aesthetic that you see everywhere. So you see her doing hauls and posting a bunch of stuff on her social media. She currently has her social media private right now. I don't know if she is going to unprivate it, but that's this. I'm just showing you the stuff that I do have. I don't know what I'm going to be able to have access to because she has like gotten rid of so much. So she posts up a lot of those hauls and target runs, which honestly are really popular on social media and actually kind of fall into another category that I want to talk about in the future, which is the like Amazon must have hauls and the excessive hauls and content content creators that are literal pages only dedicated to hauls. One of the big issues when it comes to content creators like Marlena, who are only dedicated to hauls, is the fact that all of their content is based off of purchasing and shopping. And a lot of content creators simply cannot keep up with that. So they will go in a credit card debt. I can't even wrap my noggin around how anyone's comfortable doing that just for a damn 30 second video, not even a, a YouTube haul, okay. There's some people who will buy the products and return them, but either way, this is just a problem, all right? There's a bunch of people who are trying to 
create a bunch of haul content, but there's a lot of people who do not have the finances for it and are promoting heavy amounts of overconsumption. So Marlena, in my opinion, was participating in content that was constantly churning out an overconsumption mindset. She was constantly sharing things about hauls and that is just not really smart or attainable. Just a heads up, if anyone wants to be a content creator or is trying to become one in 2025, do not do that shit, okay? It's one thing if you actually have bought stuff. If your channel is dedicated to being like a strict, like and only meat writer for Amazon and Target, like girl, get a grip. You need to actually have personality and offer something. Constantly posting up overconsumption stuff is just unethical. So that's what she was all about. All of a sudden, as you know, sometimes we see on social media, the topics will blow up where we will see people saying, oh my God, this big influencer is a fraud and she got in trouble. So Marlena actually got arrested because she was caught stealing from Target. I don't know if you guys know this, but um, a lot of companies actually will wait until $500. Like if you take like 20 bucks here, 40 bucks here, 100, like they will wait and just track it until you hit that $500 mark. That's just what I have read up on. So that's what happened. And this kind of blew up because now she has a decent following. I think when I first checked, she may have had like 200,000 followers and it skyrocketed to almost like 400,000 after this entire situation. Happened. So she had a big following and was known for this and then got exposed essentially for completely lying to a bunch of people. But stealing a bunch of shit that she did not need. When you're scrolling through all these platforms, you're pretty much going, oh my God, wait a minute. All of this pretty much that she was showing to us was a lie. Now it's kind of confusing though, because when I would look at her content, you could see that she's in like, it looks like either a nice apartment or a house. I'm over here thinking like, oh, she has money, good for her. But then it's like, you know, reality hits me and I'm going, okay, well, someone could literally be paying for an apartment they can't afford. You know, there's some people who are, maybe have like very well off partners that could help them with creating these kinds of visuals and, or there's also times where don't have as much money as they are portraying or claiming. I have a few points that I want to throw out there before we get into her response and the continuous drama. One, I cannot express to you enough how frequent this is that there's many content creators out there that are just completely full of shit. How many people are just really writing off of a credit card. Some of them have access to family money, which I'm not going to shit on, but like, you know, that's an additional privilege that not everyone has, or like they're just flat out lying. They're doing things that they don't actually have it, but they want you to think that they do. But I think it's good to talk about because yeah, we need to be cognizant of how we consume content because not everyone that's posting up has all that. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of influencers that are doing good with their money and they are doing phenomenal. But what I am saying is every time someone will post up maybe some content that talks about, I'm a millionaire from this course. It's, you know how easy it is to Photoshop that shit and lie? I've seen that way too many times. And to me, I think it's kind of falling into the same idea of a skit and a character. I think a big amount of these overconsumption influencers influencers are truly faking a character. They're not actually who they're showing on camera at all. Like they're creating this fake lifestyle and character of someone who's like busy, actually has a lot of money, has a lot of stuff going on, but they're not being honest and real. And the problem is, and why this is an issue is because when you're over pushing this, one, you're selling a bunch of bullshit that you don't even use or believe in, but two, you are nothing but a walking ad and three, you're promoting and pushing other people to do the exact same thing in my opinion. Like it's one thing if you have actual hauls or if you you have legit money, like that's fine. But when you're flat out faking it, why? There's also a big misconception that having a lot of things will make you blow up on social media, which is so bullshit because you know how many people I've seen blow up on social media without faking a lifestyle. They didn't have the perfect cabinets in their kitchen, the most aesthetically pleasing bedding, like they were making it happen. She wasn't, she was stealing a bunch of shit she didn't need. How, like I would flat out full transparency. If it, this was somebody that was like stealing baby formula or diapers, you're damn right I'm gonna look the other way. Again, I'm not, I don't want anyone catching a case for stealing. I don't want that whatsoever. But if she was going viral for stealing like diapers and formula, I, I'd be like, and she's trying to survive. Like I personally wouldn't give a shit if she's stealing like things that she legitimately needed, but that's just me. A few other things that I caught while I was digging into Marlena is I see that she has a six week post-op appointment video that is shared on another account about some of the work that she's got done on her body. Looks like she got her boobs done and she got some sculpting on the rest of her body. And I also, as I was digging, saw another content creator who showed that allegedly she has a public defender and she's claiming that she's making a little over a thousand dollars a month and that's it. A couple things. It's either Marlena's telling the truth and she doesn't have money, but she is putting things on credit cards and stealing because I feel like that would be the only way to make that happen. Or two, she is making a good amount of money off of social media, but she's lying. Either way, if you don't have money, what the hell are you doing going and getting work done on your body? 
body if you are broke like that and have children. But this entire situation is just a big old mess. Marlena Velez is being represented by a public defender. Her second case was just filed by the prosecutor's office and she declared herself as indigent and asked for a public defender. In this form, she has listed that her monthly income is only $1,100 and she has two dependents, no child support, and no other forms of income. Now, Marlena, I know damn well you make way more than $1,100 from TikTok. In fact, I could confidently say that you make at least $1,000 per video that has over a million views, minimum. So I was kind of, I mean, I'm, I'm not shocked because I know this is somebody that has a pattern of fraud and she is continuing down that pattern of fraud. And I'm not judging because I've been there, but I just thought that was really bold um, because that can easily be disproved. Sending a subpoena to TikTok for her creator rewards program or any type of information uh, on how she monetizes from TikTok. And you wanna know how she was doing this, y'all? She had specific tags that she would like bring and scan instead of the legit tags. It's as if you would like scan a banana for a PS5. That's what exactly what she was doing. She would scan other things or other tags as if she had scanned it, but she wasn't doing it at all. Maybe it's just me. I do check myself out in the cameras when I'm checking out at Target. I always look fuggo. Those cameras do me so bad. But you don't look like you don't comprehend that you're getting recorded and monitored the entire time. Do the five finger discount, grab it, put it in your bag and go. I don't know why you were checking out. Like that makes no sense to me. But you mean to tell me that you, you literally went through checkout and was like, this is how I'm going to do it? I have heard of high schoolers that were able to steal more and get away with it than this person did. Okay, so she got arrested, she got out, and a lot of people are talking about it on social media, talking about her kids and how she's negatively impacting her children, which I agree, how she's negatively impacting her career, which again, I agree, if she's an influencer, like legitimately, you are screwing yourself, which is bad, but also the fact that it's opening up a conversation for how people fake a lifestyle. So, you know, when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, maybe she won't ever say anything and this is going to be humiliating maybe she'll pretend that it didn't happen and just keep making content maybe she's going to lay low because she has you know a case on her hands at this point I was expecting again a little bit more but as we're used to on this channel I'm constantly reminded that I have way too much hope for people to do something right so let me show you her response like she she full-on posted back on social media get ready with me to talk about the elephant in the room Hot take, I don't know why there's some absolute fuck ass losers on social media that are like, she's so iconic, she's so funny. I truly need some of these people to utilize their brain cells for at least five minutes tops, okay? I need you to really lock in and realize that this is not funny. Like this is not something that we should be encouraging or be like, LOL, and make shitty people go viral and popular for that. This is somebody who is trying to fake a lifestyle, sell people a bunch of bullshit, cause problems for her children essentially, and is getting arrested now for faking a lifestyle. How, how is that iconic in any way? But the fact that your response, and blows my mind because I'm sorry, if you're getting arrested, again, as I've told y'all before, be quiet and get a lawyer. Oh my God, stop posting on social, be quiet, talk to a lawyer and silence. You can yap about it later when it's done, but stop. You are ruining your cases immediately by talking on the internet. She does that and she writes a long caption, which is smart because a lot of people had to pause to read or the video kept replaying in the background as they were reading, which gained her a shit ton of engagement. And by the way, her, her follower count, yeah, grew up from like what, 200,000 to almost near half a million. Okay. Okay, so the caption says, all jokes aside, I don't even know why we're joking about this anyways, but all right, Marlena, all jokes aside, I just know my team is managing the situation. Everything is okay. My kids and my family, my home are all okay. Despite the unfortunate situation that's unfolded, you act as if you went through a natural disaster. The natural disaster and unfortunate event is you being dumb. That is unfortunate, but it's also preventable. Your continued love and support means everything to me. Well, there will be a time to discuss my wrongs. Now is not the moment. And it doesn't mean I don't want to speak on it or take accountability for my actions. It means everything is still being dealt with in court. So I just ask people to respect that. I also want to be clear that this doesn't define who I am and it doesn't reflect the person I strive to be. I do believe that we all make mistakes and it's how we learn and grow from them that matters. I'm committed to doing better and not just for myself, but for my family and all for you who have supported me. 
Moving forward, I hope to continue sharing my life here with you, all my ups and downs, the lessons I've learned along the way through all of this. That being said, for those of you who do still choose to support me, I want you to know that I appreciate you during this time and truly means the world to me and it hasn't gone unnoticed. I truly, what what level of hell have we hit? Because how is it that this is a normal thing? If you do something like that, I'm sorry, I expect an apology video with tears. Okay, bring back the 2017 apologies on YouTube. That's what I'm looking for. Out of touch influencer, you sit there putting on makeup and then write a caption of my bad guys, whoops. As if like all the items just fell into the scanner and into your bag and into your car. We need to get better idols. We need to choose better idols. We want better future, but yet we engage with people like this and give them support. How? I don't I don't even comprehend. And again, another video that she posted up was this. I just don't have the energy for this. I am unsubscribing from this drama. Selfish, out of touch, pathetic. So now I think the this, this situation has died down. I'm over here waiting and kind of like, all right, let me see if there's anything else that's going on with it. Mm, my God, I, again, we saw the apology. Take a wild guess. Take a wild guess what she did do again. That bullshit. She got caught stealing again. <laughs> She's 22 years old, was first arrested for theft on November 21st after she was accused of stealing $500 worth of items from Target in late October and posting incriminating videos to social media. So you mean to tell me you're like, hi guys, here's the stuff that I got from Target and it's the shit you stole. Prior to her arrest, police said that they were called to Target following a report for retail theft and were shown surveillance videos of a suspect scanning a fake barcode at the self-checkout area. Police posted images of the video online and anonymous callers later tipped off investigators to her identity after viewing the image. Police then learned, this is so bad. <laughs> it's wrong, but it's funny because like, I am not a woman to say, go commit the crime, okay? But if you're gonna commit the crime, oh my God, whip out, get one of these or steal one of these, I don't know. Get one of these, a notebook, pad and paper, Write down how you're gonna get away with it. Maybe, maybe do something. Maybe do some some kind of planning, you know? Plan out how you're gonna not get caught. Like you if you're gonna do the criminal shit, why would you wanna be in a position where if someone arrests you, they go, what a fing idiot. Instead, it'd be like, damn, that was smart. This is such a bad criminal. Like, I don't do it. But this, like, if you're going to do it, you don't even try to like hide the crime. <laughs> Police then learned that she had filmed herself getting ready to go shopping on the day of the theft. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hi guys, get ready with me to go rob a bank. <laughs> get ready with me to go steal Target's new Christmas holiday section. <laughs> get ready with me to steal Tree Hut from Target. <laughs> You're not even a, you're not even good at this. That's bad. If you can even get creative with the way you're gonna steal something, don't even be a content creator, babe. She filmed herself picking out the items inside the store. They compared her social media posts to the surveillance footage and positively identified Velez as the suspect. Marlena, how did you think this was gonna end? Oh my God. She was arrested and charged with petite theft. Now, on Saturday, November 30th, however, police responded to a Target store and met with loss prevention staff about a separate instance of theft from November 20th. Police were shown surveillance footage and recognized Velez from the previous arrest. They also recognized a man with her who had a unique left arm tattoo seen in some of Velez's videos on TikTok. Now, Velez is accused of failing to scan 16 items worth of 225 while going through the self-checkout process, instead scanning a false barcode. She was met at home and arrested. Body cam footage from the police department shows this. She was charged with one count of petite theft and taken to Lee County Jail. She was released on Sunday on a $500 bond. So she got arrested, got out, got arrested again because she's done this a lot now, apparently. Now she's out, $500 bail. December 10th is when she is gonna have her arraignment. I love this because the way that she was caught was police department, you know, got called and they posted up a photo of her and then an anonymous caller called in and said, hey, I know who this is. I'm just, I'm stuck on the fact that this wasn't about needs. Like this wasn't about something that she needed. And another thing, if you have a decent amount of following and if you know what you're doing, okay? Not everyone that has a big following knows what they're doing. If if you know what you're doing and if you have a good following, you can make some decent money on there. Even if it's just on the TikTok creator fund, you can make some money on there. So I'm kind of surprised of why you would be essentially needing to steal them because if you're doing pretty good financially, what the hell is it? Like, are you just cheap as hell? I just, I don't comprehend this. Either you're not making money on the creator fund or you are and you're still stealing. Either way, you're not stealing needs, you're stealing shit for hauls. And the fact that you filmed yourself getting ready to go buy the stuff, which I don't even comprehend how you would think that's a good idea. Posted up on TikTok and thought, 
I'm going to get away with this. Genuinely, genuinely, how long did you think you're going to be able to do that? I would love to know what went through her mind of, I'm going to be able to get away with this. Also, if you're growing on social media and if people see you in public, you are going to be watched more and people are going to know more about you. She already had a higher chance of right here, someone seeing her steal from Target because somebody would recognize her from the Target she goes to. Her face is recognizable now if she already had 200,000 followers and someone could again recognize her. You're planning to grow a platform and become a big content creator, but you think you're going to be able to get away with stealing. How? How? You want to be popular and recognizable, but commit a crime, huh? I don't know. I don't even know. The point is there are some content creators on the internet who will do shit like this and who will fake a lifestyle. And one thing I'm going to say is I think content creators who all their content is, is hauls and let me show off a bunch of shit for you to buy. That to me is such an unethical type of content and platform because some of them aren't even doing it right. And there are ways that you can do it right, but there's a lot of people who do it wrong. It's very like pushing products that make no sense, pushing overconsumption, taking any check or brand deal that they can and just doing doing sketchy shit like this. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if we keep having more content creators exposed, but good. That's honestly great because I want to make a deep dive talking about how many content creators do this because I'm not saying everyone does, but there are people who are so desperate and crave it and don't want to go the hard route of building a platform. They want to take the easy route of finding anything that will stick essentially. And if it means committing a crime, they're going to do it. I mean, we've had people rent out houses and cars and completely lie about their financial situation. And then they got rich because a bunch of people naively looked at their Instagram accounts and said, oh, you look rich, you know, I'm going to buy from you because I can get rich too. And the only way this person got rich was because people believe their lies. There's so many people like that on social media and it's completely pathetic. And again, another beautiful example of this was a video that I posted up like what, I think a month ago or so talking about the veneer tax and one girl that was participating in veneer tech and realized, oh my God, I'm doing something that's illegal. So the reason why she got enticed to become a veneer tech because she saw somebody who had everything. You know, like she specifically said, like he had money, he had a good space, he was always spending money in a club, but that's the problem. There's a lot of people who will do anything to make you think that they're rich, but they do not have that. I mean, the shit, there's some influencers who will dump thousands of dollars onto a credit card for a European trip. Meanwhile, they can't even like keep up with the interest. Point of the story is there are some content creators who fake, lie and post up a bunch of bullshit because they want you to buy something from them. And not everyone on the internet has a good like that. So whenever you see that, please remember some people either have privilege to certain things because they were born into it. Maybe they really do have a good and have grown their way, you know, to the top. That's valid. But also there's sometimes where some people don't even have it at all. They're completely faking it and they're doing anything they can to give you the vibe that they're financially successful. A wonderful example of this is a lot of my old anti MLM content that I used to make where we would talk about these MLM leaders who would sell people on the internet a business opportunity lifestyle. Like they would say, I'm a millionaire. I make so much money. I've done so well. And three months later, all of a sudden they were falling apart because their multi-level marketing team underneath them just disappeared. They had no money. Things like that happen all the time. So please, every time you see people like that, don't automatically go, God, I wish I could be them because a lot of them wish that they could be them, the character that they created and pretending to be. They aren't even the character that they market off to you. So that was it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check out Womanizer in the link in the description below and pin comment. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.